Hi everyone, welcome to our next video. Today we are going to discuss about the non-standard amino acids and also the two amino acids that we have not discussed from the standard amino acid, the selenocysteine and the pyrolysine. So without wasting much time, let's get into it. Let us begin with selenocysteine. So, selenocysteine and pyrolysine are the two amino acids that are a bit different. As I said, these are derived from the 20 amino acids that we have studied till date. So, if you look at the board, we have three amino acids here. One is the cysteine, one is selenocysteine and one is serine. Now, why do we have all this? This is the structure of selenocysteine having this one as its R group. This one has a similarity with cysteine. If you look at the side group of cysteine, it has CH2 and one sulfur. Here CH2 and one selenium with a hydrogen, sulfur with a hydrogen. So the difference between cysteine and selenocysteine is that in selenocysteine, the sulfur is replaced by a selenium. That's why the name selenocysteine. Okay, but don't think that selenocysteine is derived from cysteine. No, selenocysteine comes from serine actually. What happens here is this OH and H come out as H2O resulting in dehydration and one sulfur, selenium sorry, selenium is attached to this hydrogen making it selenocysteine. So, we have lost this part. So, we are left with carbon, hydrogen and one selenium is attached to that. So, we get SEH. Okay. So, that is how serine gives rise to selenocysteine. Okay. Do not think that cysteine is the precursor of selenocysteine. No. Selenocysteine comes from serine. Now, why the name selenocysteine? Because selenocysteine is a structural analog of cysteine. I hope that is clear. Selenocysteine is a structural analog of cysteine means it has structural similarity to cysteine because in place of sulfur, sulfur we have selenium. But serine is the parent of selenocysteine. From serine, selenocysteine is derived. Okay. Now let us move on to the next one which is our pyrolysine. Now we are into pyrolysine. So pyrolysine as the name suggests has some similarity to lysine. So this is our structure of lysine and this is our pyrolysine. So here we have this one as our R group. Look at this humongous R group in pyrolysine. Okay, this will all be H2, 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 H2. This is the humongous structure with a five membered ring at the end. Now see lysine gives rise to pyrolysine. It is not like the selenocysteine and cysteine. Here lysine gives rise to pyrolysine. How does that happen? We actually need two lysines to react together to give rise to one pyrolysine. And while forming this pyrolysine, we need two lysines. Okay? Two lysines are required to give rise to one pyrolysine. In the process, it loses one NH3 group and also one H2O group. These are the two groups that these lysines lose. After losing these two groups, they give rise to one pyrolysine. So, that is how pyrolysine is formed from the lysine. Okay, I hope that is clear. So, selenocysteine is formed from a serine, but it is a structural analog of cysteine and hence the name selenocysteine. Pyrolysine on the other hand has the structural similarity to that of cysteine and also, uh, sorry, extremely sorry. Py pyrolysine at the, on the other hand has the structural similarity to lysine and also it is derived from lysine. Okay? So pyrolysine from lysine and selenocysteine from serine but structural similarity to cysteine. Now what are the uses of these two amino acids? Obviously these are found in proteins. Now selenocysteine is found in the catalytic sites of certain enzymes. When we study enzymes, we will understand what are catalytic sites. There are some regions in enzymes which help in binding the substrate, which help in catalysis, in speeding up the reaction and there are some other sites as well. So, one of those sites is the catalytic site and in that catalytic site, selenocysteine is found in some enzymes like glutathione peroxidase is one of the examples. Glutathione peroxidase is one of the examples, uh, is one of the enzymes 
in which a cellulocystin is found in the catalytic site. And what about pyrolysin? Pyrolysin is found in some bacterial proteins. This pyrolysin helps in the formation of some bacterial proteins and cellulocystin is found in some catalytic portions of some enzymes. So they are useful in forming proteins because enzyme is a type of protein. So these two pyrolysin and cellulocystin are useful in the formation of proteins. Another very interesting fact about cellulocystin and pyrolysin is that uh, when we study about codons, the uh, three membered uh, formulae you can say or codes that give rise to uh, a protein chain, we will study about this when we study nucleic acids. So codons, if you have any idea right now, then you must be knowing that there are three stop codons, UAG, UGA. UAA. Okay. This UAG is actually the codon used for pyrolysin as well, and UGA is used for selenocysteine. Just remove this one. So these two, which are known to everyone as stop codons, which will break the formation or stop the formation of a new protein chain. At the same time, these two are also used for coding for pyrolysin as well as selenocystein. So, we will study about this in our lectures during nucleic acids. So, as of now, just remember that these two codons are also used for coding some amino acid, the pyrolysin and selenocystein. Now, let us move on to some of the uh, non-standard amino acids which are not useful in forming proteins and see what are their functions. So, non-standard amino acids are those amino acids that will not be ribosomically incorporated into the proteins. It means ribosomes will not help in the formation, uh, ribosomes will not use these amino acids for the formation of proteins. So, those amino acids have various functions and some of these amino acids are actually derived from the 22 amino acids that are known to us. So, out of those, uh, 278 approximately 278 amino acids some of these which are derived from some of the amino acids which we already have studied are these 4 hydroxyproline derivative from proline from the name itself you can understand from where it is derived next is the 5 hydroxylysine derived from lysine desmosine derived from lysine n acetylserine derived from lysine n formyl methionine derived from methionine uh, N carboxyglutamate derived from glutamate. This N uh, sorry gamma carboxyglutamate. This gamma carboxyglutamate uh, is also found in prothrombin. Prothrombin is the blood clotting factor, blood clotting protein, uh, prothrombin. So in this blood clotting factor, uh, gamma carboxyglutamate is also found, which is derived from the amino acid glutamate. So these are some of the amino acids which are found. Uh, which are, which are derived from the amino acids that we have already studied that is from the standard amino acids out of those 22. So these are some of the examples. Now let us look into some other amino acids which are non-standard and have different functions, specific functions for specific area of our body. So here we have some of the amino acids uh, which are non-standard but have some specific functions. Ornithine and citrulline. These are the key intermediates in the formation of arginine and also in urea cycle. If you study about the urea cycle, you will see there is citrulline present in one of the cycle. Uh, in the cycle, you will find one compound as citrulline. Uh, so this is actually an amino acid which acts as an intermediate. Intermediate means the compounds which do not, which are not the products. They are just the middle compound. Compound A will convert to compound B through the formation of compound X. Then that compound X is called the intermediate compound. Intermediate compounds don't last. They don't stay in the reaction. They just form in the middle of the reaction and then convert to something else. So these two, ornithine and citrulline are like that. They are the intermediate compounds in the cycle or biosynthesis of arginine and also in the urea cycle. We have another interesting amino acid which is azacerin. Azacerin, obviously formed from serine, is it functions as an antibiotic. So, antibiotic act activities are to kill bacteria and this amino acid performs the function of acting as an antibiotic. Now, you might be thinking that why have I given only three? Actually, there are 
lots and lots and you can find them uh, if you want to know about all of these these 200 or 250 it will not be possible uh, to accommodate all those amino acids into a single video so if you want i can form one pdf or then i can uh, link it to the description so if you want that list then do inform me uh, on the comment in the comment section and these amino acids that i have talked to you today in this video the non standard amino acids are the important ones so if you go through these that, that will be more than sufficient for you to uh, answer any questions during the entrance but still if you want those extra amino acids more amino acids non standard ones if i if you want to know about them then you can uh, comment in the comment section and i will upload on pdf in the description from where you can get all the uh, uh, functions of different non standard amino acids so this is the last video of types of amino acids and next video we will move into a different topic on amino acids that will be on the titration curve so we will get into that so as of now that's all we have for you today uh, hope you enjoyed the video hope you understood the video and until next time cheers